right. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to episode four of the Jocks and Jills podcast. It is a Monday. It's kind of snowy where I'm at. We all got the Super Bowl rivalry series hangover kind of going. Uh, and we got a lot to talk about. Like, what a day Sunday was in women's sports and women's hockey and just like in sports in general, Tess. Seriously, big day on the golf course, big day on the ice. Yeah. You know, football, of course, everyone's snacking on all the foods and all the drinks. They got to move the Super Bowl to not on a Sunday. Can we all just like agree it's Friday or Saturday? It's giving everyone the Monday off. It's having there be a holiday of sorts on the Monday. Like, come on. Anyways, I guess all employers just assume, you know, their employees are mailing it in today and the ones that aren't aren't fans of football. Or Taylor Swift. So, um, but yeah, wicked. You get you had the Super Bowl appetizer with the rivalry series game, game seven from St. Paul, Minnesota. Wicked. Uh, and then you had Nick Taylor going into uh, you know, playoff holes, winning my favorite golf tournament of all time on my 40th. That's seems like be, a very you, you waste yeah. manager. I was gonna ask you if it did before. It seems like a used no, to be. Yeah, no, it's been on my bucket list. I gotta go. I'm getting too old. I think waiting waiting until I turn forty was just a dumb idea. Because then now I can't do it the way I want to do it. You know? No, you still definitely can. I mean, I would obviously hammer down, and I would totally suck it up and do it. However, however, it would come with a lot of pain and probably like two weeks recovery. So whatever. But yeah, yeah. big day, and then the Super Bowl. I mean, holy overtime, the whole nine yards. I felt like. Um, you know, the the day delivered. The only thing that I wish was a little bit closer was game seven of the rivalry series. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Usher okay, delivered. Okay, so a couple big things. Usher delivered. Usher definitely yeah. delivered. He brought out everybody and their dad except for Justin Bieber, which I know was upsetting to a lot of people who thought that Justin Bieber was for sure going to perform. But I thought it was a good performance. A lot of throwbacks. That's what you're kind of looking for from a Super Bowl halftime show, That's right? what you want. Yeah. All the people yeah. my age rocking out. Yeah, reliving totally. their, you know, college days. <sighs> uh. <laughs> Actually, we'll get to relive your college days a little bit, I feel like, today with our with our guest on the Jocks and Jills podcast, but we'll get to that in a little. Uh, let's dig into kind of the couple big news pieces in women's hockey over the weekend. The rivalry series, of course. Canada comes back for a second year in a row uh, to reverse sweep the United States. But before we kind of break down that game that you were hosting yesterday and on TSN test. Let's get into the first ever trade in PWHL history. I was working the Super Bowl last night uh, and I sat down and bang, first trade in the PWHL comes down. Um, Minnesota gets Sophie Jakes for Susanna mm -hmm. Tapney and Abby Cook and everybody, I don't know, did this take you by surprise? I feel like you were surprised when I texted you. Because I didn't expect it to happen right now. Right. But looking at everything you're like well yeah everyone's on a break it kind of makes sense like maybe at the beginning however I spoke with Natalie Darwitz this morning and um, we were just shooting the breeze and uh, she was like you know it's funny it just kind of happened organically because I said I was like I totally expected Pascal Dau to be the first guy to make a deal because he's made trades before yeah. and trades are kind of scary especially in a shortened season and you don't want to just make a trade to make a trade and that's exactly what Natalie said she's like I wasn't interested in just making a trade and she had coached at uh University of Minnesota. She'd seen Sophie Jakes play and beat her team a lot. She knows what she can bring. She said she felt like, um, you know, th there's a jump from collegiate play into this league, obviously. And she says, I know her potential and I know I can get her to her ceiling and beyond because she knows basically what she's capable of. So she was like, I, you know, when, when Danielle and her started talking about um, something that wasn't trade related, um, all of a sudden trade trade talks started happening and, and, you know, who they were willing to move and who they weren't willing to move. And, um, you know, players with two year deals were the players that they really started to talk about. And, um, she said, you know, on, on the back end, she felt like she had a lot of players that were stay at home to you. you got your lease deck lines, you got your Flaherty, you got your book binder, you know? And she's like, I, I, I have, I had a lot of similar I needed something more dynamic. I needed something to add to, you know, Grace and Taylor. And she was like, so, you know, I, I threw it out there and, you know, she's like, I, I had to give up Susanna. And she's like, that, that guts me because I know she's a good player, but in order to, you know, make that extra step or 
put yourself in a good situation. Sometimes you got to take chances. And she was like, and I was willing to roll the dice. And I did. And she said, you know, she thinks that Susanna will be a very good fit on their team, which is why she was okay with it. But she loved the way Sophie would fit on her team and how, you know, there's players that she grew up playing against in university and stuff. So she's like, there's familiarity there. And I think I can help her get there. So that was huge. And also I was like, that's crazy, man. Like, I'm so glad you made the first trade. That's really cool. She's like, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I was on the phone trying to make another one before I called you. I was like, nice. okay, so things are heating up. And she said some, you know, some teams are interested, some aren't, but she's, she want she's she wants to win it. And it, there's one thing I got to say, I've played against Natalie Darwitz for years. She's a pain in the ass. Like she's one, she's really good, like stupid good. And then two, her competitive, her compete level is like, I guess that's why she's so good, but her compete level is annoying. You know those people where it's like they can't even lose yeah. at like walking through the door first. You're like, would you just – or like I eat my lunch faster. It's like no one cares. You know, that's Natalie Dark. She just wants to win so bad. And it's like, you know, I feel like if she was in last place, she'd still be like, I don't care. You know, I'm going to make trades to win this thing. Like I'm coming back and winning this. Like that's her mentality always. And so there's no quit. It's a must win. Um, and I feel like on Boston's side, they just got deeper down the middle. And hopefully this is something that can – you know, help ignite Hillary Knight. <laughs> um, something in me thinks that Hillary Knight's playing a little banged up, just because. Okay. Uh, do you, are you are you feeling that at all? I, I don't know, because you know, you see Hillary, but it's not Hillary, and you're like, well, there's a reason, because Hill just doesn't do that. You know, she goes yeah. quiet and dark for a bit, but she always rears her head, and it's just like. Remember me? And you're like, yeah. And we haven't really, outside of that OT goal, which was a dirty OT goal, we haven't really seen much, you know? Yeah, that, that's fair to say. And I, I think this trade might have something to do with with getting her going a bit and, and finding mm -hmm. a consistent line mate for her. I don't worry too much about Hillary Knight. Like, we've talked about this before. What I'm interested in, maybe more from this trade perspective, is what it's going to look like when Sophie Jakes gets going in this league. Like, it's been seven games. And, and that's another thing that this trade kind of highlights, Tess, is like how short the season is, how close mm -hmm. all these teams are. Every team in the PWHL is within seven points of one another right now. So yeah. if you think that you have a championship quality team, and I'd imagine that like six out of six GMs probably think that they do, if you think you're in a position to make your team better, uh, you got to do it. Were you, I think I was a little bit surprised by this trade also because Sophie Jakes is 23 years old. She's coming off a of Patty Kazmaier season. She just got drafted. Not to say that this was like giving up on her kind of right away, but it does seem soon. Like no points through seven games and all of a sudden she's on her way out the door. Uh, you know, and maybe, maybe there's been talk about like, are you happy here or things like that? That's you fair. Know, like. But through seven she's games, a, like that's what's just crazy to me. It's just such a small sample size, but but not small in the scope of this season. And that's it. I mean, she's a three-year contracted player, right? And they were still willing. Yeah. So it's like, you know what? Maybe they just felt like, okay, well, we're going to have to do something. I mean, Boston's not out of it by any – no one's out of it really. But like I feel like – you know, they, they were willing to move her for a reason. They felt like, you know, getting someone up front, getting the offense going up front was more important. And I and maybe they were just very comfortable in their defense that they had and felt like, you know what, it yeah, wasn't like, do you think do they were too jammed much damage. Back there. She wasn't getting much offensive opportunity. Like when you got Megan Keller back there, it, it's hard to get right? much opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, she's always going to be getting the grade A ch chances and opportunities. And you're just, you know biding your time but at the same time in those moments like um you kind of have to make your coach give you those if that makes sense you know yeah. what I mean? like you yeah. gotta be that's true you gotta be that player like yeah i get it. i guess i'm 1b but i'm gonna make you really think about putting me out in more situations for the opportunities for sure. that you're giving me I don't and know. you know her really well like does she play better and i guess most players play better more touches they're getting, the more reps they're getting out there. Um, Sophie's a very quiet to herself person. Um, she's incredibly intelligent. She's super kind. She comes from a great family. I love her parents. Um, but I feel like comfortability and familiarity 
um, go a long way with her in terms of getting the best out of her game. So I feel like Natalie Darwitz was also picking up on that and felt okay. like, you know what, I, I know who you are. You know who I am. We've seen each other a lot. Yep. Here's a ton of players that you've played against. You know how they play. You know who they are. Um, so let's just get you in the mix. And I feel like, you know, nothing against Courtney Kessel by any means, but court coaches a completely different way. It's this is what we're doing. This is how you do it. Go out there and do it. And and that's it. I'm not going to hold your hand through it all. And I feel like Darwitz is willing to, you know, take the time and really massage this through because sh she said to me, she was like, look, I didn't pick up Sophie just to have Sophie this year in the next two years. I picked up Sophie because I feel like she's going to be in Minnesota for a long time. She's going to have a ton of roots here and she's going to end up being a Minnesota player for, for as long as I want her to be because what I saw in her in university is exactly what I want for my club. So. Yeah. All right. So the first trade in PWHL history in the books, Boston. Awesome. Gets Susanna Tappany and Abby cook, uh, for Sophie Jakes. And we'll see how that all shakes out. Some games coming up this week. Uh, before we get to that in our interview, Tess, the rivalry series, you were hosting I game know. seven yesterday on TSN. It's kind of like a, a little appetizer for the super bowl. If you will, Canada, does the semi impossible in sports they come back for a second year in a row from a three nothing deficit reverse sweep to win the rivalry series over the usa in the same way they did it last year they come all the way back and then they stomp the usa in game seven i don't even know where to start with this tessa like it doesn't seem like something we could quantify or or decide what it means like what was this it's how did this happen it's so, hmm, I don't want to take away what they accomplished because that's huge. To do it once, amazing. I mean, we had a board up that was like, you know, the 04 Red Sox did it. Yeah. Uh, the 2010, uh, what was it? Flyers did it. Uh, who else? 2014 uh, Lakers, uh, no, not Lakers, uh, LA Kings did it. And it's like, okay, okay, so it's been done. Then they do it back to back. And it's like, well, this year was a little different what? because- I know, right? It's insane. This year, though, I'm going to put an asterisk next to the second one because the Americans were missing a lot of their top players for the last three yeah. games. They had no NCAA players. And people might be like, well, whatever. Canada didn't have their NCAA players. Canada didn't have Sarah Fillier. That's it. Do you want to know who the Americans right. were missing? Let's go with Lacey Eden, Kirsten Sims, Layla Edwards, Britta Curl, Tessa Janicki, Hannah Belka, Kayla Barnes, Caroline Harvey, Haley Wynn. All of those names aren't just names. These are players that play for the national team. They're not a grocery stick like I was. They're playing. They're out there getting minutes and scoring goals. And it was kind of cool for me to realize, like, I'm like, well, they're missing all their players. And it's like, well, hold the phone here. They still had Coin. They still had Niter. They still had Keller. You know, they still had a lot of players out there that were good. But it just went to show how much the Americans actually rely on and have built their team around this younger, faster group. And it's like, they're the engine. And these older ladies are benefiting from what they bring. Abby Murphy, I forgot to add her to the list. My goodness, she is leading the the nation and the NCAA in goals. Uh, is it goals? 35 uh she, in goals and penalties taken. She has 35 penalties. <laughs> this she it's is a good little combo. Buddy, wherever she goes next year, that team is infinitely better. She is yeah. in, she is the Brad Marsha of female hockey. And she knows how to get under the Canadian skin. I hate that I love watching her play. Yeah. But sense. I think there is something to talk about with this specific rivalry series with the team that the USA put out there this time. Like there just wasn't any battle yesterday. And that's like, doesn't matter what kind of talent you put out there. You got to have some battle when you're on home ice in Minnesota and, uh, and you had this series in a stranglehold to start. And I felt like that started in game six in Regina when it was close through two periods. I believe it was 2-1 the Americans were leading and they are heading into the third. Am I wrong in that? I think you're right. Am I getting game five and game six confused? No, sorry. Friday, Friday's game was a 3 nothing win by Team Canada. And all of the goals came, came in the third period. Canada is just a third period type team, I guess. And the Americans are, are learning this because in game five, they were up two one and Canada came back and won that four two. So 
I felt like they it was on on game six, both teams were going at it. Goalies were playing great. It was nothing, nothing going into the third. I mean, the fact that it was nothing, nothing didn't speak to what the action was like. It was back and forth. Yeah. But then all of a sudden the third period begins and the Americans just show up and that's it. And it's like, oh, there's no fight left there? Like you guys are done? Two years in a in row? The- no fight? Like, come Beats on. Open, ordered already? And then the last game, you're on home soil. It is game seven. This is cool. It's game seven. And it's just like, wah, wah, wah. and the worst part about it is Taylor Heisey goes down. Fluke yeah. run in on a back check with Sarah Nurse clutching her shoulder. It looked like collarbone-ish, separation-ish. I don't want to – I talked to Darwin. She said it's an upper body injury, and we're not probably not going to see her on Wednesday when they play um, against Ottawa. But, um, um, you know, so it's, it's like a huge okay, loss. Huge loss for both and, – and, like, I hope it's not anything bad because, one, I love watching her play, and I'm a big, big fan of her as both as a person and a player. But, two, like, okay, so you got the rest of February here to figure it out, March, and then it's April. So you don't want to be out too long, you know, get your feet back on you. You want to be peaking at the right time come April for world championships in Utica. Yeah. And that's another thing that kind of rattled me about the lack of battle from the U.S., to be totally honest with you. Taylor Heisey goes down on home ice with her entire family and friends in attendance because she is like the embodiment of Minnesota hockey. And nobody on team will rally and like win the gosh darn game for her. It just, I was like, come on guys. Well, the thing is, is like your top centerman goes down. There is a massive window of opportunity there. Who wants it? Who's taking the cookie? Everyone's like, nah, I didn't bring my cup of milk. It's like, what? (laughs) I didn't bring my cup of milk. You know what I mean? Get in there guys. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, yeah, so Canada wins I think- the rivalry series two years in a row in like the weirdest way possible. <laughs> and the, two years in a row, game seven was a blowout. I think it was five nothing or five one last year at, at, in game seven at the rivalry series in Canada's favor. Like six one this time in game seven, six one. And it's like, yeah. And hey, USA, I, I wanted, I wanted a bloodbath. I wanted, I wanted Abby Murphy style hockey from both teams, just yeah, going at it, and it wasn't. And it's like, no. well, this happened last year, so hey, guess what? It's happening again. Like you, who, everybody, no, it's not a thing. I don't know. I I just feel like, and I don't know if. Hear me out. So all of the first rivalry series games were played before the league happened. The league happens. Yep. it's exciting. Okay. So exciting the fact that we started a podcast. Talk about it because it's awesome. So there's mm-hmm. a ton of excitement. Now all of a sudden, is this kind of like a little bit of a hindrance on their season? Not as exciting? So I was actually kind of almost I, – I couldn't tell if I was thinking the opposite. I saw a hilarious tweet from like a PWHL fan that said something mm-hmm. like, sorry, I can't credit to who this was, but it was hilarious. It was like, thank God the rivalry series back. I've been feeling like a child of divorce watching the PWHL or something like that with all their favorite players uh, from Canada or USA going at one another. So I was kind of exploring the idea in my head yesterday. Like, is this making it more interesting? Does this make me appreciate the rivalry series a little bit more? Because we, of course, see best on best on a weeknight to weeknight basis now in the PWHL. When you see the like supercar that is Team USA and Team Canada, maybe I appreciate it a little bit more now. But I think yeah, it's fans, fair. The players on the ice, All Star Weekend, they like they just went through a really busy time. Yeah, and I think I feel like for the fans, yes, you you hit the nail on the head. That is absolutely right for the players. You know, it's kind of like- different vibe. Different vibe. Why are we doing this right now? Like we got, we're mid season and like on top of it for the GMs and the coaches, especially Minnesota, they're like, are you kidding me? We just lost Heisey for what? What is this? A fake trophy yeah. in the middle of our yeah. first shortened season? Come on. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I think this is the end of the rivalry series. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that because we are going to see a lot of great hockey. The league's only going to get faster and better next year when a bunch of players graduate and move on. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think that's the last we see of the rivalry series. And cool that it ended the way that it did. And, and you know, just for selfishly story-wise for us, you know, it's it's cool to be able yeah. to come back from down 3-0 and win it two years in a row. 
But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I expect more fight. And and look at that said, like, I don't want to call them sandbaggers, but just wait till Worlds because Canada, I hope you're ready for this because it's going to be a rude awakening when all, all of those players I listed off are like coming off really good NCAA seasons where these players are training every day and playing not one, but two very hard games every weekend. And they're going to yeah. be raring to go. So yeah. I hope everyone's ready. It's going to be awesome hockey. I'll say that. It's going to be the awesome other bone I have to Actually, pick with the Americans. Hold on. I just saw my notes here. The Americans had a – they were going into, I think it was the third period with a five on three. Okay? And they decided to make to pull their goalie and make it a six on three. Now, I have no problem with that. Cool. Get creative. That's awesome. Make it kind of fun. However, they needed goals. However, and I love her to death, and she's a true competitor, and and this is no knock on her, but he, he put Kendall Coyne in front alone. Debian was just standing there looking over her. There was no screen, no net front presence. It was just <laughs> right. Coyne, you, what do you – Hillary, would you mind standing next to Coin in front of the net? Get two people in front. Make it really hard for Debian. They even said in their intermission interview, we need to take Debian's eyes away. We've been saying it all the time. You know, it's too easy for goalies nowadays. They, they're going to save every shot that they see. So you got to get in their way. And then they, he puts poor Coin in front. Put her on the side of the net. Give her a tap and get any other player off the bench that's over five foot five and stand them in front. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just a thought. So. That's a good tactic. Um, another thing that That's GMs, well, a certain GM would be smiling about um, is the fact that a couple Toronto players have themselves a little bit of chem going, Malte and Spooner. Spooner's just been hot recently. She's scoring left, right, and center in the PWHL, leading that league in scoring. I believe she read, led Canada at the rivalry series as well. Goals in back-to-back -back games. Got another couple yesterday. Um, and in saying that... Tess, I think it's a pretty good time to switch over to our interview, part of the Jocks and Jills podcast. And our interviews Let's all season it. long are brought to you by Nobis. Uh, we love their jackets. We love them. We love them for hopping on right away. So shout out to Nobis. Uh, and shout out also to our fourth guest on the Jocks and Jills podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the one and only Natalie Spooner. <laughs> All right, our next guest on the Jocks and Jills podcast is a two-time Olympic gold medalist straight out of Scarborough, Ontario. She's been a Team Canada mainstay since about 2010, began her collegiate career at The Ohio State University back in 2008. In 2011-2012, she set an Ohio State single season record for goals scored, earning her a nomination as a top 10 finalist for the Patty Caz. She's also named as an NCAA first team All-American. She finished her Buckeyes career as the school's all-time leader in goals, 100, and second in points at the time. She became a mom to son Rory and made a comeback before the most recent world championships. And at the time of this interview, she is the PWHL's leading scorer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jocks and Jills podcast, Miss Natalie Spooner. A couple snaps woo, for woo, Natalie. Woo, woo, woo. Thanks so Go much Bucks. for having me. Dude, I feel like we should play schedule. the... Is insane. The fight song, like the Ohio State fight song. I knew that this was going to be crazy as soon as we had our first Ohio State alum on this podcast. This is yeah, exactly the reaction I was through. expecting from Tessa. Yeah, it's just going to be <laughs> Buckeyes barfing all over you because it's uh, the best school in the whole world. But anyways, Spoonsy, good seeing you, buddy. Um, you forgot to mention uh, Julia that she's played. Okay, in I'm three actually done the reading these bios. Like. Let me stop your ass right now. I'm done reading these bios because every time I write one of these bios, I'm the one that sits and writes the bios. And then Tessa just takes the two minutes after to rip it. You write the damn bio. You write it. Like, I'm just, what did I'm I forget this add. time? You never sent it to me, so I don't see what you write. So I'm just going to add the fact that she played only three games in this rivalry series and led Canada with six points. So uh, no biggie. Uh, Spoons, nice to see you back at – uh, you know, an old hockey cliche, 110%, but um, awesome having you here. We're going to talk about a ton of fun stuff. You know, you and I got some good stories, so mm -hmm. um, we'll get into the PG rated version of a lot of good things, but let's start where it all began with your mom and Marie, your dad, Peter coming over from London, trying to look for something for your brothers to do. That's very Canadian and look who takes advantage of the old hockey is you. So walk us through, you know, just quickly kind of what it was like watching your brothers play and how you wanted to get involved. Yeah. I mean, my parents came from England and to be honest, they knew nothing about hockey. 
So my dad was a rugby player and then they're like, we're not putting our kids in contact sports. Like my dad had so many injuries. So all my brothers started soccer, but then every kid in Canada plays soccer also plays hockey. So then they all started playing hockey and I did the same. I played hockey in the winter, soccer in the summer and tried to keep up with them on the back door rink, backyard rink and all that good stuff. But uh, I mean, my oldest brother played at Wisconsin and I remember going to watch him and being like, wow, this is amazing. Like I want to go to school in the States. Um, at the time it was Wisconsin. Once I visited Ohio state with Tessa, it became Ohio state, but growing up, I mean, I, I looked up to all three of my brothers and wanted to be just as good as them and play with them. So, um, I was pretty lucky that I, I had them now and even now supporting me still. And, Oh, look at the cat. <laughs> Made a nice appearance. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I've been waiting the cats for this moment. The cats were supposed to be locked upstairs. We've been waiting for this I, to happen. I'm so happy. Liam, this come get the cats, Spooner dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Liam, he's you're going to lose a point, buddy. <laughs> Liam, come get the cat, dude. Okay. This we just have so to ignore good. Mowgli. He's a really good guy. Uh, I was Mowgli. told that the cats were going to be locked up. They were locked up. They've escaped. Oh, there's more than Liam's one. So I'm sorry. Great. You were telling like a nice... Yeah, I have two uh -huh. cats. I, I don't want to alarm anyone. I don't have like five <laughs> cats or anything like that. Please don't judge me. I interrupted Julie. this nice heartfelt story you were telling about going to Ohio State <laughs> and learning to play hockey with my cat. That's a better story. I like the cat <laughs> stories. Mowgli. Yeah. But but Spooner, like, yeah. let's be honest. You grew up, you said, with parents that knew zero zilch mm -hmm. about hockey. How the heck did you and your brother end up being so – I mean, you're obviously natural athletes, but how did you guys end up being so good at that both of you were able to go away to NCAA schools and play? I don't know. I think my dad just, like, instilled, like, a really hard work ethic. Like, as a rugby player, he would tell us these stories – like, these crazy stories about how, like, he would be, like, running lengths of the field and, like, blackout and, like, I don't even know. So he would, like, take us to the track all the time and we'd run and he would, like, I don't know, sign us up for every single skating school I feel like you could that – was like hours long. It was like daycare probably, but at the same time we loved it. And we eventually like worked hockey school. And so we were there all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just did it all the time and loved it. So I think it was probably his work ethic. And then my mom was like the total opposite, just like the most supportive mom ever. And was like, just go do your best. Like, doesn't matter what you do, just do your best. So um, I feel like it was like such a good combination of like, you should work hard, but you should also have fun and like enjoy yourself. So I feel like I've kind of taken that through my career. And yeah, I mean, I think that I was lucky that I had the three older brothers too, to always have people to play with and push me. And they always say like, I always injured them more by accident <laughs> than, than they did <laughs> me, but it was a lot of fun. I feel, by the way, my your boyfriend's shaking the bag right now. That's how the cat like just ran away. You could hear the treat bag shaking off in the distance. Oh, what was that? Good, good play, Thought Leo. bubbles. Yeah. Unbelievable. I love it. But I love your parents. Spooner, you described them so perfectly. Your your dad's just like the strong, silent type that is like you could tell like if and when he says something, you probably listen. And your mom is just you, – you can't run into Spooner's mom without wanting to give her like a really big hug. And she's <laughs> such a kind, sweet person. But your parents, as you said, came over from England. And so they've got accents, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I first met Spooner, when she first started play, this is hilarious. Spoons, I got to tell the story. There's so many I could tell, but this is a good one that I could share it. So Spooner said some weird, some words differently, like very weird and <laughs> right. not weird. Just like they sounded <laughs> off. You're like, why? What is she trying to say? So I was at a table eating with Spooner and we were just talking about family and stuff. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, so who, what, who, what's your mom's name? What's your mom do? She's like, oh, my mom's Anne Murray. I'm like. Your mom's Anne Murray? And I'm like, oh my God, I hope this girl makes this team. I am going to fangirl over her mom? Anne Murray's daughter? And I know Anne Murray's a huge women's hockey fan. So I'm like, your mom's Anne Murray? And you're like, yeah. I'm like, she's saying it so nonchalant. I'm in my head, I'm like, why is her last name Spooner? I'm like, I would totally take Murray on the back. So I'm like, your mom's Ann Murray. You're like, yeah, my mom's Ann Murray. I'm like, and Spooner <laughs> sings in the dressing room and everywhere, really. So, and performs. Right. So I'm like, this, and it's all coming together. And I'm having this moment where I'm like freaking out on the inside. Like, I'm going to be best friends with Ann Murray and her daughter. This is so cool. And then I've learned that Spooner just says her mom's name with a little bit of accent. And it's actually <laughs> Ann Marie much to my not disappointment because <laughs> I love Anne Marie she's a she's a gem she's a sweet human being but 
Um, it wasn't Anne Murray. I did eat and meet Anne Murray later in my life, and I totally fangirled at work. However, nice. Um, that was like the first moment where I'm like, this girl, like, what? What is this kid's story? <laughs> Were there other like words? Like, what else stands skull. out she, from the Spooner she said I was Dictionary? My skull cap was funny too. Yes. Skull. I don't know what else. Skull. Like my parents, oh my. like they would be Hello? like, I think you said maybe, I don't know. Like uh, they say vitamins, like Natalie, did you take your vitamins? You know? So like instead of vitamins, it's vitamins. <laughs> um, nice. I always hear that on Jay Shetty. Yeah. I don't know what else. There's yeah, just like random awesome. little like I feel like perks. I, yeah. I feel like I need to hear the I, Ohio State visit stories from like both of your oh. perspectives because did did you know you were going to be a Buckeye before you went to visit or was it the visit that sold you? It was the visit. I think, well, I had gone on an unofficial visit and I knew I really loved it. And then I was still going on like my official visits. But it, I mean, it was a four, it was a leader. But then afterwards, yeah, for sure solidified it. So what Kate, were they like? So like, what did you see there? <laughs> <laughs> There's no, so much just, to this story. I, can I just <laughs> tell me, can I preface this? So my head coach at the time, Jackie Bardo, was like, we've got – because I, I was sick and tired of getting these top recruits in, and she would pair them up with – with. I'm like, can you just let me be the lead recruiter on this? I'm going to make everyone come here. Whoever is the top-notch recruits, give them to me. So like a Lauren, Mackint- a Lauren McIntosh and Natalie Spur, give them to me. Let me show them the school and explain to them what it's like playing here because these are all kids that are, you know, national team bound, and we you need – with any school for their program to get off the ground. Before I went to Ohio State, really, Emma Laxon was there. They were kind of bottle the barrel on the WCHA. I went there because I wanted to make a difference, and I felt like if I could just get another person on board, we could make this something. And and uh, Lisa Chesson came, who was an American defenseman, and so she came on board, and we ended up breaking into the top ten. So I'm like, okay, we're loose. now we need other people, you know, to to carry that load and just to to push it through. I'm like, she's like, we got a good player coming in. Her name is Natalie Spooner. She's Canadian. I'm like, I know of this person like give her to me so spooner breaks her jaw like what was it the week before you came i don't know it was probably a few weeks before yeah she comes to her official visit with her jaw wired shut okay and my coach is like you have to blend all of her meals oh beers through your nose (laughs) with a straw julia and here are wire cutters in case she's choking or if she throws up me they're making me responsible so fun i was like look i lived with with one very responsible human being her name was mallory peckles and i was like i think i'm gonna give these to her but i'm like you know what no i'm gonna i'm gonna handle this so i went out and bought a blender Oddly enough, my mom just dropped off a ton of bins at my place from all my hockey memorabilia, and I opened it up, and the blender was in there. It was all this old stuff from my Ohio State days. I'm like, Mom, what was this? She's like, oh, we found that deep. We forgot about that. That's been there for long. It was the blender spoons, and I had a good laugh, and it's so great that you're on here. Anyways, talk through your visit with a jaw wired shut. And me as your host, like, I hope it went well. I felt like we set it up it went pretty great. good, no? It went great, yeah. I think yeah. I think the harder work was probably on you because I didn't think twice about it. But, yeah, I had my jaw, like, fully wired shut so I could barely talk. I sounded like a bumblebee. But I had known Tessa because we had been to, like, our, my first September camp I had been to and she was there. So I was like, I know Tessa. Like, I would love to stay with Tessa because it was, like, someone I knew. Anyway, so I went with my jaw wired shed and I remember her taking me somewhere and we were getting like chicken noodle soup and she was like, hold the noodles, just the broth, please. <laughs> but no, we went, we ended up going out still. I think me and Mac were there at the same time. So she lost us at one point, but we had a blast. We were tearing up the town and yeah, it was, it was so much fun. She survived to talk about it and she even I went survived. there. Yeah. But yeah. And then like, what did do though like what kind of fun activity could you do when you have your jaw wired shut were you in the bar with your jaw wired shut i'm yeah. pretty sure i was yeah or in the backyard parties there was a band in the backyard that night i've never yeah. seen a band we brought her to the hockey house the backyard i was like what is yeah. going on Our- where am i this is a movie and i got to go to the football the game ho- no. they sold it sold the hockey yeah. guys had a band, and on the weekends they would always just perform in their backyard. So we brought Spooner there. We also like made sure like the best looking athletes were paying attention 
to Spooner and like talking to her and stuff. So it was funny because they would come back. They're like, she's like, I'm like, no, her I forgot to tell you, her jaw's wired shut. That's not how she talks all the time. <laughs> I feel like I didn't even talk to <laughs> anyone really sure. except for Mac, but there you it go. Was, Maybe I was talking it was, to people. She would, it was like a hum. Yeah, hello. Hi, Anyways, we had a good time. And then. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a bumblebee. It was like so weird. Oh, man. And then Spooner leaves and I live in a house with six other ladies and there's this white bra kicking around. And I'm like, would someone put their bra away? Like enough with this. And they're like, not mine, not mine, not mine. I'm like, well, like, look at my itty bitty titties. Like, those are not mine. (laughs) And everyone's like, I wonder whose it is. I'm like, I bet you this is Spooner's bra. So I text Spooner. I'm like, yo, did you? forget your white bra here she's like i did i'm like all right so i mail it to her not thinking anything a week later or a week and a half later i get this thank you card in the mail from <laughs> Anne marie saying hey tessa thank you so much for um hosting natalie she had such a lovely time and especially thanks for returning her brazier i was like i'm keeping this card for life that is the cutest thing I've ever heard of my life. I didn't even know my was mom, mom said that. concerned? I didn't even know she said yeah. that until you were like, oh, I got a note. <laughs> your bra got sent back from Ohio State. Yeah. Like, was your mom concerned, do you think? Must have been my only bra at the time or something. Who knows? <laughs> It's even funnier thinking about Tessa going through the effort to put it in like an envelope. I did, and I mailed it. It cost me like twenty some bucks, but it was so good. And and her mom was so thankful. She sent me a card, and that's when I was like, "What a keeper! She better come here." And I was thinking, like, you know what? I'm going to keep this bra here, so then she has to come here to get the bra back. But I was like, "Nah, that's just mean." That's awesome. Anyways, your time at Ohio State. Um, Talk about it. I mean, you. You basically took that team by storm, and I remember um, you being upset when you didn't get centralized in in 2010, and for good reason. I mean, you were having a hell of a season, hell of a two seasons, I should say. So uh, just talk us through that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I loved my time at Ohio State. I had so much fun. I mean, the girls, I wouldn't say we were the best team, but we worked hard and tried hard and had a lot of fun, and I think like Tessa said, like tried to continue to build the program and now look at it today. Like it's amazing and they're top in the country. So it's pretty cool to watch. But yeah, I mean, I remember exactly where I was in 2010 outside the architecture building. (laughs) And I remember Mel Davidson calling me and just being like, your hockey's not mature enough. And I was like, absolutely devastated. I wasn't far from the rink. So I literally sprinted to the rink to my coach's office and was like, what do I do now? And she's like, you stay here and you play. And I was like, I don't want to stay here and play. I want to be there. And she was like, well, this, yeah. you're just going to have to work harder here and, and get better for next year. And so that's kind of what I did. I just kind of looked internal and said, what can I do? And I worked hard and looked up to girls like Tessa and the other girls and saw what they were doing. And luckily then in 2010, I was at Four Nations Cup. And 2011, I made the world championship team and kind of from there was like, okay, this is what I need to keep doing and keep working hard and keep growing as a player. So – Aside from hockey, Natalie, and like before the PWHL became a thing, you guys all kind of had to be doing a bunch of different stuff, uh, whether it's like social media ads or or different campaigns like that. You did something really interesting. Tell us about like the amazing race and how unique that was to, to your career. Like, is that the most unique thing you think you've done? That or Battle of the Blades, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> oh, I yeah. don't even think we got two Battle of the Blades alumni on the show right now. Yeah. yeah. Figure skaters over here. Um, no, but Naturally. I mean, Amazing Race was so cool because everything was like different. Like every day you were going to wake up and you had like no clue what you were going to do. And like, it wasn't like things that you would expect. Like I was like building a chair out of driftwood or like. I mean, bungee jumping or like skydiving, like you'd maybe expect from a show like that. But then like Mick had to like eat snake soup, um, like sorting fish, like just like the most random (laughs) things, Um, which was, I mean, it was fun, but also like very crazy to just be waking up and not knowing what your day looks like when literally I'd just come off the 2014 Olympics where our days were like so regimented and it was like, you're at the rink here, you're going here, you're eating this, you're training, you're doing this. And then like to just go into like, waking up and like opening a card and you could be going anywhere in the world was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, and I remember talking to you a little bit. I I can't remember what you said, but like 
there were so many people on that and they, they were all your good friends, but it was weird because you guys weren't even allowed to interact. Like you had, if you went to the pool in a hotel you're at, you had to be at like opposite ends and you weren't even allowed to like talk to each other. Yeah. Like we actually weren't. So when you're on camera, you could interact, but as soon as like you finish the leg and you have to have like at least 12 hours to rest in a hotel, you were pretty much like stuck in your hotel room. And we were allowed like one hour to go to the gym, but most of the time they would try to put like the hour at a time when no other team was there. So you really couldn't talk to any of their teams like off camera. So that everything they caught was on camera. Like if you were talking strategy or anything like that, it had to be all on camera. And that's crazy because anything- she came back, Julia, to play with us at the Toronto Furies. And we had a game one time and like all of the cast showed up and were like, we love Natalie. Natalie's the best, blah, blah, blah. And I remember being like, but do you, you know, how do you even know? Like you guys weren't even allowed to talk. How do you guys know each other so well? We had an awesome night. I mean, it was a wicked night. We all partied yeah. and had some fun, but mm-hmm. like, it was so confusing to me. So how did you guys become so close? I mean, I guess every day you're kind of still like, even though you're racing against each other, like you're hanging out at the airport. Um, like right. when it's not like the actual race, when you're waiting for your flights and stuff. So you get to kind of know each other that way. And then, at the end we had like a big party and then afterwards when the actual like show airs we had like viewing parties so i had a bunch of viewing parties at real sports and like a bunch of the other teams would come and watch and stuff so right you just kind of like stay in touch and connect like over watching the episodes and stuff and then yeah i mean jackie and laura they have season tickets to our games like this year too so they've been at I a know, bunch I of the saw games them. Uh, yeah. mickey came so yeah there's still a lot of the girls and guys I keep in touch with, which is a lot of fun. That's awesome. Right on. Okay. So before we brought you on, we were obviously breaking down kind of this past weekend of women's hockey, the rivalry series. Once again, you guys come all the way back to reverse sweep the United States and win the series. I don't even know what the question is. Like what the hell? <laughs> like, what, what was after you guys go down three, nothing. What's the conversation around the team? Like we did it last year. Let's do it again. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't at the rivalry series where they won that game four, but I feel like that was like such a critical game looking back. Like, obviously we needed that win or else like, what are these games? You know, what is like the purpose of the games after that? So I think once they got that win and then coming into this rivalry series, I just went off like knowing that the girls had done it before. And I think that that gave our group a lot of confidence that we could do it again. Um, And so I was, I mean, I was just excited to be back with the girls um, having a lot of fun, but I think, yeah, just having that confidence that they had done it last year, that we just needed to take it one game at a time and keep making it to the next game or else really like, then again, the series is over. So it is like do or die each game for us. So we were kind of talking about this before. How has the, how do you think the PWHL has kind of changed the feel of the rivalry series? I was I was trying to decipher yesterday. I'm like, hmm, do I appreciate the rivalry series more now? And I guess for you guys, it would be totally different because you're going from all-star to regular season games. Like, you guys are tired right now. So I imagine the rivalry series yesterday, you're like, okay, let this end. Yeah, like it's kind of, I guess, different, but also like we still need those games. But the rivalry series was made because we weren't having enough games. So now that we have all these games... Um, I guess like that purpose is gone, but at the same time, I think when we get to play best on best, it's amazing. And like, I still think like I hadn't played many Canada U S games. So to be able to get like that speed of the game back and everything, and just to feel, you know, that next step up of like best on best, I think it's still great to play and great for like development and to be ready for like world championships and just those big games that we need to be ready for. And like, for yourself, Spoonzy, um, you know, you I, I almost don't even want to backtrack a little bit before this rivalry series because uh you had Rory, you came back to play. Um how old was he when you came back? My gosh. Four when you came months, back at that I world, think. he was four months old. Yeah, because he was born. Oh, I think in- he may have just been five months. I think I started playing at four months for Scotiabank, Team Scotiabank. Yeah. To like get enough games under my belt to kind of show that I could play. Yeah. Cause he's beginning of that December, sense. right? Yeah. 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 So what was, I mean, you scored a goal, the place popped off, but like what, 
for yourself? Were you like, I'm 67% right now? Like, where was your head and body at in that moment? Oh. I don't know, maybe 50%. Yeah. <laughs> it was more just like go. Like I tried not to think about my body, to be honest. Like I was in – looking back, I was in a lot of pain. And I prob- like, like I'm glad I played because I needed to get back in the mix and I needed to get with the girls. And I think that it like helped me in the long run like just feel the vibe I needed to be at. Um, but like it was hard. Like my body prob- was, was not healed. And to be honest, like as – like a first time pregnancy. Like I also didn't know what my body was supposed to feel like, like they say there's all these things going on and you know, like, okay. But like at the time I was like, I feel way better than I did like month one, month two. But then like now I look back and I'm like where I am now, like I was not okay then, (laughs) but, but yeah, you just don't know. Right. Like you're just like, Oh, my body's been changing for like a year or more, like nine months it started changing. So like nine months plus four or five months. Yeah. Like it's been changing for over a year. And so it's just like, this is just what it's supposed to feel like, you know, you just don't know. Like there's no one can tell you either because like every pregnancy is different. So people tell you things and you're like, is that happening to me? Is that not happening to me? I don't know. Yeah. Do you, is there a specific memory that kind of stands out from that time? Like you're getting back to playing at the highest level in the world five months after giving birth. Is is there a memory that stands out where you're like, this is crazy. What, What am I doing right now? Oh, um, yeah, probably lots. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I feel like at the same time, like every time I got on the ice, it was like, this is my happy place. Like this is like, I feel the most like myself. So it was kind of like at the same sense, like a really good, like release to like be a better mom at the sense, like I could like go away and like be like great on the ice or at least like, working hard and feeling like I had a purpose. And then like coming back and also being like an amazing mom to Rory. So there was definitely times where like I'd be in the locker room and I'd be like rubbing like heat rub all over myself and like pumping at the same time and like taking the Theragun and just being like body just feel something like <laughs> and just being like, okay, here we go again. That's wild. Do you remember when yeah. the turn happened when you were like, okay, like here I am now I'm crooking. Like I'm, I'm back to Spooner because Quite frankly, when the PWHL yeah. season started, I was like, oh, there she is. That's Spoons. Like you were the, you and Malte were probably the only two on your team that were going from puck drop on day one. Mm-hmm. Um, like after Worlds, I took like a lot of time off because I was like, my body's not where it needs to be. So I, I didn't even skate at September camp. I didn't start skating till probably October again. Like I needed a good break wow. like, because I hadn't taken it before. Yeah. So I like was still training, but I just wasn't on the ice like at all. Um, so that's six months. You took then, six months away. Yeah, pretty much. I took wow. quite a lot. Good for you. Um, yeah. So after sep- like probably like two weeks after September camp. So probably beginning of October was when I started to slowly get back into it. And then um, they were like the aim was to be ready for PWHL. So I knew like I wasn't going to go to those rivalry series because like I just wasn't ready. And then um in our pre-camp in Utica they were like okay we're gonna give you the third game and you're just gonna play like eight nine minutes so that like we're not just throwing you into like the p-dub game and not having played any game so I played that game and like my head was spinning a little bit but I was like okay like got a game under my belt at least and like feel okay and then yeah like I would say like coming into the P-Dub games and just like going game to game and even getting like the practices under my belt with like the girls, I definitely started to feel more like myself and like way better and just got my legs under me and um, just got used to the speed again. Um, But I think like there's still like, even like month to month now, I'm still like, wow, like I feel better. Like, so like what after September camp, so probably October was when I stopped breastfeeding. And that was like, took probably like a month, a month and a half. And then I was like, wow, okay. I feel like a totally different person already again. Um, so there's just been like lots of like little bits that have kind of come together and been like, I'm slowly like, I mean, I feel now like I'm back to normal, but who knows in a month, maybe I'll be like, Oh, now I'm more normal again. Who knows? Yeah. But the past month, it just feels like you've unlocked another level. Like 
couple games with two goals in a row in the PWHL on either side of the all-star break, a couple goals yesterday, goals in a couple games straight. Like what, what has gotten you? Do you think you're just finally comfortable or do you think you've actually unlocked another, another level recently? I don't know. I think it's just like feeling good, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. Like just my body is feeling a lot better than I had been during those months off. So maybe that, um, I guess also like just able to have like coaching on the daily basis. Like we haven't really, you know, like in the past we haven't had like that, like we had kind of just like a showcase and you just kind of yeah. show up. Um, so really since like, I mean, team Canada, we had coaching, but then like since the C dub, it's been kind of like a little bit of mixed match. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think it's just a little bit of everything, like an excitement to be back in this. Is that cat. the cat again? No, I think Stop that was me. actually my, yeah, it actually was. My <laughs> boyfriend put up a little fence to keep him out and uh, uh, he knocked it down. He knocked so. it down. <laughs> like a baby I, gate? <laughs> it, it actually yeah. is a baby gate for ah, uh, a golden retriever. That is so good. <laughs> the boyfriend is That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> He's losing the battle to the cat. Ham is losing today. Ed's going to be up 3-1. Oh, <laughs> anyways but, what's the most fun city your team has had so far like on the road have you guys gone out and had some fun in any city yet uh, i mean we've been to all of these cities playing you know the hockey that we have but like yeah. as toronto team and like we won't tell troy ryan don't worry no like our turnarounds have been pretty quick i'm trying to think of like where like in the hotels we've mostly just hung out afterwards mm. i can't even... i don't know half the time i'm so tired i i'm there but i'm I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Can you actually um, just think. break down the turnover that you're having right now for our listeners that you, oh gosh, <laughs> like, yeah. you're just getting back to your oven. Break that down for those listening right now. The, the life of a woman's hockey player and how hard you guys have to work. Yeah. Well, we flew back from Minnesota last night. We got in at like 11 and then I got back home probably just before two. And then we found out we have got to fly out today because of the, there's a snowstorm coming to Boston. We weren't supposed to fly out till Tuesday but we'll fly out tonight now and then play Wednesday, fly back Thursday, play Friday. And then we get the weekend off, which will be really nice to have. I feel like it's been a while since we've had some two days off. So that will be, that'll be really good. But I mean, at the same time, like it's, it's a tough schedule, but like, this is what we wanted. This is like what we want. Like we want to play a regular season and like have all these games. So, I mean, it's amazing that we get to have this and have all these games and like, you know, no matter how one game's go, you know you got the next one ready to go. So it's it's pretty fun. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, tell me Living a little bit life. about the room and the roster, the dressing room. We know that Emma Malte is like the TikTok star of the team. Is there anything, <laughs> any like Emma Malte lore that <laughs> the average oh, PWHL boy. fan might not love, might not know? I uh, I mean, she's a ball of energy. Uh, I try to get her to give me some TikTok tips sometimes, but. I'm not quite there. Um, oh, what do I got for you? It TikTok's hard. And have you guys had rookie party yet? Is that a um, do you do rookie party? I don't know because like, is there a rookie? Like, that's a good question. Like I when we're all, question. you know. So we didn't really have. We had party, but like I don't know if you could call it like a rookie party because it was just a party. Like, right? Because we're all just kind of new, new to the league. Right. You know. So you had that. Yeah. Team bonding went well. Who hosted? Yeah. Where was Blair. it? Blair Blair hosted. Okay. Blair's at Jenner's house. So at Is Jenner's she house. in Oakville? <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's yeah. my she's close. Yeah. So you guys threw it down in Oakville. Everyone showed up. The neighbors didn't complain. You didn't have cops knocking on the door. Nope. No. You're not going to give us any any you're nope. not spilling any tea, are you? That's cool. No complainers. <laughs> no complainers. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Jenner, feel... you got some cool neighbors. Yeah. 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 Did you have I any? I, I don't know if I got any good stories. Like, are there for any PW, any of the players of the team that you maybe didn't know before that have surprised you with their personalities or anything like that on Toronto? Probably Olivia Knowles. Like, she, she's something, she's so witty, but like so funny. But also just like so much energy that you're like, where is this coming from? And just like she loves to like 
dance, but she's also like really tall, but also a gymnast and can do like backflips and stuff. And you're like, what? Ooh. Like, how do you do all this stuff? So yeah, she's probably one that surprised me. I'm trying to think. Like a like real life other, gymnast? Like I knew. Like when she was younger, she was a gymnast, I guess. Huh. And, like, then she took a gymnastics class at Minnesota, and she was, like, showing me her routine that she had to, like, learn. And, like, and like she just did it on the floor, but then she did, like, a back, like, thing, like, as if she was on, like, a balance beam. And I was, like, what? And, like, just a little cool. back tuck flip thing. And I'm, like, you're almost as tall as me. Like, I would kill myself if I tried to do that. <laughs> See, I love hearing about I get the a hidden talents. Wheel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I saw Carly Jackson playing guitar on TikTok the other day. I, I love Ooh. seeing the hidden talents from all the PWA. CJ's a players. good one. She's she's a lot of fun. She's like like you just love to have her there because she just is the most positive person. Like you just like at practice, you're just like, Yes, I need to see CJ today. Like, let's go. Oh, that's awesome. Are you gonna start a band with her spooner? Because we had a band. I don't know if you remember. We should get this thing we going did. again. You know, we gotta come out the teaspoons. Uh, teaspoons. Yeah. What would be your song? Was now? that what it was? Before it was, yeah. We were called Teaspoons. We perform for our team. Oh, we never yeah, practiced nice. really. Actually, I think no. I remember hearing this on the World's broadcast when we were in like Calgary. What were our go-to like songs? That. One was Pink. Um, yeah, Wake Me Up. Uh, how does it? Wake Me Up when it's all over. We played that one. No, that. What oh yeah, we one? would sing that. That's um, Wagon Wheel. We would sing a lot. Yeah, but nice. then <laughs> Pink was. Um, the one took her friend. my hand, you showed me how you promised yeah. me you'd be around. That one. Uh, uh, yeah. I could see why Tessa thought your mom was Anne Murray. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I, you have no idea how my mind was <sighs> blowing up in that second, staring at this rookie like, this is crazy. Uh, but yeah, Spoons, listen. Eddie recorded our music for our podcast. He recorded it at Milltown Sound, a recording oh. studio here. We got to do a little feature on this podcast where you and I get the teaspoons yes. back together. Like we should maybe have done like a Christmas album or something oh. like, you know, like we should have come out with something like that. Like even just a special occasion song. We, you know, this is, we're cooking something really good here. Yeah. yeah. For charity. Yeah. What's like, what's like Julia, the next special occasion? You can just occasion. be like a, a background do up. I just want to play the tambourine and vibe uh, Easter? Okay. Easter. And then nice. summer. Easter, Easter bunny songs. songs? Easter bunny. Oh my gosh. We could do kids songs. Hop little we bunnies. Hop, hop, hop. <laughs> you know that song. Come <laughs> okay, on. You, do I know that song? Gosh. Doc McStuffins. You've do you have Doc McStuffins that. in your head yet? We, oh. we don't. We don't. We're still on like the Miss Rachel, like really young kids every so often. Soon yeah. he'll be on to the yeah. full blown, I'm sure. I know. And that's yeah. how you get uncool, Spooner. That's how you turn into me. You you morph from Julia into me. You're like right in the middle right yeah. now. You're still doing good because you know how to use TikTok. See, I am up here. <laughs> in the I love how cool zone. You're using the cat lady as like the cool barometer right now. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think I'm I don't think that's quite where you want me, guys. Uh, <laughs> well, Spooner, it was awesome having you, man. I feel like it's been a while since we got to catch up. It's awesome seeing you killing it out there again. I'm glad you're back to normal. And I'm glad you had the wherewithal to take, you know, five to six months off to really get back to yourself and, you know, give yourself time, give your family time, give your son time. Um, I don't know. It's just knowing you I, it's easy to cheer for you because you're such a lovable human being and um you know it's it was it was uh awesome to watch your comeback and i'm really proud of you and i hope you keep kicking butt and taking names oh thanks so much guys thanks for having me on too this was fun i'm loving the podcast Woo. thanks natalie the best all right thanks so much to natalie <laughs> Thanks so much to Novus for sponsoring all of our interviews all season long as well. Shout out to them. Natalie is so funny. And like, I, just because she's so light and, and happy all the time, I, I think that it gets lost. Like, what a battle the past year or so has been for her, how hard it is to get back after having a kid. Like, it's a pretty incredible story. Well, and I think too, you know, that's just a part of who she is, is she would never let you in on any of that. She would just go about it herself within her own circle and that being you know her family and her husband husband Adam Redman and getting the job done but she's going to show up every day and not put her burden on anyone else I think that's that's how she is and um, one of my favorite teammates by far uh, I love that she's a Buckeye 
Um, I love that she's running table right now. And, you know, she's you actually talked to- about Ohio State less than I thought you were going to for that interview. I got to give I you didn't. Some, I got to give you some props. I know. I didn't want Ohio State <laughs> haters to turn off our podcast. But, you know, we got the OHIO in there together. I feel bad because they they're playing all the time. They never really get to go back to alumni weekends. So I feel like I'm yeah. constantly holding it down for the people that I know that can't be there. And you do that. Spooner you hold it down. It. Always. A you must. make sure enough beers are had for everyone who cannot attend. Ugh, yeah. And then the <laughs> next day you just regret it and then you're hungover for a week. But yeah, no, it's awesome. I love <laughs> love the having Spooner on. Love that um love that she took the time. I mean, gosh, like she said, she's busy and they just got in. They she said the plane didn't have Wi Fi. They were getting text messages about the Super Bowl, landed, got home late, up early, couple interviews, and she's back out. So kudos to you, Spooner, for coming on. Uh, I love you, Nobis. Thank you, Nobis, for coming on and sponsoring all of our um, interview segments. It's huge. Um, Best jackets out there, to be honest. They're not just fashionable. They're actually warm and comfortable. They're the greatest. They're worth every freaking penny that you throw down. So, Nobis, we love you. Yeah. All right. Big week this week. Uh, Mm -hmm. Off last week for a little international break. And now we got games kicking off on Wednesday. Toronto, Boston, Ottawa, is that Minnesota on Wednesday night? And then the big one this week, Tess, is going to be Scotiabank Friday night. Montreal visits Toronto in what should be a historic game uh, where the attendance record for pro women's hockey will probably get broken for a third time this season. And It's not just going to get I, broken. I can't wait to see it. what it looks like. It's going to get shattered. It's going to get smashed. Let's be real. It's going to get smashed. I know. First, you got for every man out there listening, Galentine's Day on Wednesday. Make sure you turn the yep. games on for your lady. You know, they want to watch it. Um, but yeah, Battle on Bay Street is going to be five, amazing. Five o'clock dinner, Rezo, just for that specific yeah. purpose so I can watch hockey after. That's amazing. Good for you. Well planned out, Julia. And that's why Thank we you. are great co-hosts for that reason. I work that night, so I got nothing special going on. But uh, yeah, I feel like Battle on Bay Street is going to be no joke. That place is going to be loud. I feel like, I hope, I don't feel like, I hope scotia bank arena is loudest it's ever been like justin bieber concert levels taylor swift concert levels i want it that loud that's how loud i want it toronto if you're listening make it that loud yeah it, it's gonna be something else to see and just uh the specific characters on montreal and toronto just like a lot of iconic canadian specifically players so I, I think that building should just be next level i know it was pretty hard to get tickets again like people yeah. struggle getting tickets at the madame athletic center and they were struggling to get them at scotia bank just speaks to how much people are dying to see this game right now which is awesome i tried to get some and i couldn't yeah. but uh is mowgli yeah. gonna make an appearance to say goodbye or is uh instaham doing Mo? his job uh, I think, I think he's locked him and himself in the bathroom with the cats. I think they're all yeah. watching YouTube videos now, car Sacrifice. YouTubes, whatever he watches in his time. So. That's nice. You know what? I, a- I don't know. The point this week is kind of tough because it's almost like we should give him the redemption points for taming the cats, but it was like a dash for letting them free in the first place, you know? Yeah. And also like <laughs> with the way this last week has worked out, I am working eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight days where Ed's got the kids uh, for dinner bedtime solo. So I'd yeah, like to put a Ed point can up have on the board one. for him. Yeah, Ed can have this one. Liam can't even keep the cats in check and I had to feed him this morning. So <laughs> God damn Although you. I knew it was going to happen <laughs> at some point and I'm glad it did. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Liam. Oh, it's so tough. It, it's the way she goes. It's the way she goes. But uh, a couple more games this weekend. Minnesota, Ottawa, New York, Boston, and uh, Minnesota, Montreal as well. Minnesota yeah, it'll back, be interesting back, to see what happens with the uh, with the standings this next week. Dude, it's just so crazy because they're like you can't even really talk about the standings unless no ge- teams are playing because they change in in a matter of one game. It's really exciting and it sets us up for a lot of fun. Yeah, Boston, Toronto, New York all locked up at eleven. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, y'all. We'll we'll catch you next Monday. We'll we'll break down all the games from this week and uh, we'll we'll look back on what should be a really historic night at Scotiabank Bank Arena. Thank you as always for listening along. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. It's Jocks and Jills on every single podcast platform. If you could drop us a review or something on the Spotify or Apple Music, it, it would help us out a ton. We we really appreciate the support to start out and. Uh, we're really excited to be telling these stories for you guys. So, so keep the listens coming and we'll see you next Monday.
Thanks again. Bye.